Hi everyone, welcome back to CMD and another video. You join me in the 911 Carrera S en route to Porsche Centre in Nottingham. Uh, off to see Tom to have a little bit of work done on the Porsche. Entirely my own fault, there's been some damage. It would appear that when you put your child in the rear seat, that if you pull this leather thing really, really hard when it's jammed, instead of wiggling the seat a little, which you should do, top tip. If you just pull, and I mean pull, then this will break. Who knew? I mean, I was talking to Tom about dropping the, uh, dropping the car up. He said, listen, Dale, how you getting on with a Tesla? He said, I've got a Taycan GTS here. How do you feel about giving it a drive? Now, mixed emotions here. I've heard very good things about the Taycan. And arguably, if it's good, it could be the perfect replacement for the Tesla in a year or two's time when it's up at the end of its company car contract. So, I'm off to pick up a Taycan GTS from Porsche Center in uh, Nottingham. Uh, I'm gonna run that car for a good week. I'm gonna use it, daily it, play with it, commute in it. So let's go find out. It's a beautiful day for it. Oh, it's one thing I've missed. About half an hour left on the road. Let's get to Nottingham. I'll see you there. Well, this is very nice. Welcome to the Taycan GTS. So, obvious change of scenery, just leaving Porsche Centre Nottingham. Huge thank you, as always, to uh, to Tom and the team there. They'll uh, look after the 911, I know they will, despite my best efforts to break it. And they very kindly lent me this very beautiful, I must say, very nice very nice car i'm gonna drive back get to know the car a little and i'm gonna check back in with you guys after a couple of days driving and use to give you a proper review having having lived with the car so i'll see you guys soon Hi guys, so you join me back a few days after taking delivery of the Taken GTS. I'm just about to head back to Nottingham, give it back to, to Tom and the team. Very quickly, just wanted to talk you through the spec on this particular car because Porsche and their specs can sort of make or break a few of them. And there's some really nice pieces on here that I think are, are worth mentioning if you are looking at a Taken of any guys um, or, or a GTS. First one is the color, ice gray metallic. It is now officially my favorite Porsche color. Lots of different tones to it in different lights and you don't see it very often. Unless you visit Adam Richards at the house that Adam built. In which case you'll bump into another one that's pretty identical in Gran Turismo guys. But yeah, ice gray metallic, really nice. It's got the carbon sport design package. Not a huge amount to that, but it does give you some nice finishing touches. Mirrors, canards, so on and so forth. Nice touch, think I would probably go for it. Rear axle steering, including power steering plus, works really well. This car comes with 20 inch alloys as standard. This one's on the 21 inch RS Spider design wheels. Really like those. Um, not a huge fan of the wheels on a lot of these cars, but these ones are, are pretty special. There's things like ambient lighting, storage package, seat belts in, in red. Sport Chrono gives you lots of additional functionality. The only thing that looks out of place on the Sport Chrono is the Sport Chrono clock. It's the same clock 
that I've got in my 911 and it sits in my 911, it all matches. But here, where everything is high resolution, in this car I've got four screens, including the passenger screen, which is also an option. And that clock looks like something from the 1960s in comparison to everything else in here. The B pillars are in race tech, but I've got to be honest with you, everything, absolutely everything, even all around this sort of centre console is all Alcantara, so everything you rest your hand on when you're sort of playing with the screens, everything feels so plush, it's a really, really nice place to sit. Passenger display, I think that's personally a bit of a gimmick. That being said, while the kids have been in here, or the wife, or anyone else in the last week or so, everyone has played with it and it's kept people entertained. So actually, you know what, if the car came with it, would I be bothered? No, you can turn it off. It's, if you go into things like range mode, it'll turn itself off anyway. Bose surround system works phenomenally well. <laughs> Enough said on that. Pan roof, I love a roof. Um, it would be nice if it opened, but the fact that you get extra light in the cabin, I'm in quite a dark location at the moment and you can see me quite well. Uh, it's got acoustically, insulated laminated privacy glass which means the windows have got this sort of laminated film and you can see it just on the edge but it keeps the car super quiet again don't know if i would spec it on my own car but once you've had it it's one of those things i think you would struggle not to have again head up display i like a heads up display works nicely it's not riddled with spec but let's be fair it's a gts it already comes with an awful lot of standard and i don't feel like i'm missing anything what would I add? If it were me, radar guided cruise control, and that is it. But enough of that, let's get to Nottingham and tell you what this car's been like to live with. Ooh. You're a little bit slower than I expected. So I think the first thing I have to mention in this car, as you would expect, is that the ride and the quality of everything is very, very good. I've not touched a single material or used anything that I haven't felt is up to standard, with the exception of the electric filler cap, which if you open it, can touch the side of the bodywork. There is a pack that you can include on the configurator that would, that would stop that, this one doesn't have it. That might be a bit of a, a must, but again, it's something that Tom pointed me out to at Porsche Nottingham, and it's something that I'm sure the guys would be aware of if you were kitting one of these out. I don't think it would be a major problem. Maybe I'm being a little bit pedantic, but that shows you the sort of level you have to go to to pick holes in these cars. This is a stunning place to sit. Drive-wise, I've used everything. Range, normal, sport, sport plus. I genuinely don't feel like you would ever need any more of a car than what this performs at in range. You know, all that does is slacken off things like the aircon, takes off your passenger screen if you've got one of those, lowers the car down, so haunches it into the road to help with the aero and optimises performance for maximum range. Okay, so this is a 50 mile an hour road. If I drop down to 30, there's no one behind me. If I boot it, that's 40, that's 50. The car's not lacking in any way, shape or form. All of the screens are very adjustable. Cockpit, you can change those dials to look like whatever you want. I'm in sort of a map mode at the moment because I've got my directions in front of me, but I've got the speed limit, what my cruise control is set at, how far, all of my navigation. I've got controls on the right hand side. So I've got haptics over here that I can even mess with the suspension. I can turn regen on and off on the steering wheel. There's a lot of touch screen. There's an additional screen down here now for the driver. You know, all of the all of the menu options are the same as the main screen. They are not that far apart. So I think it's really just a case of you've got choice as to which way you access the menus. It's preference again. I've just been happy with the screen in front of me. I feel like the screen down here is haptic. So you have to physically, it's not like if you tap it like you would your phone, you don't get anything. You have to physically press the screen. But to do that, I have to look away from the road to do it. So it's a preference thing, but I would rather it just be, be buttons. That being said, it works really, really well. Wouldn't stop me buying the car, categorically not. Again, I'm just sort of plucking criticisms out of minute little details because I feel like I can't just tell you how amazing this car is. That would be boring. The Sport Chrono, by the way, absolute must-have pack. Dial Sport Chrono into Sport. 
and you've got a uh, firmer, lower animal. It is immensely capable for a very big car, as, as you would expect, and it has got Porsche driving dynamics. I run daily a 911 Carrera S, much lighter, uh, faster than this car, but the driving feel is very, very similar in a lot of other respects. <laughs> if you do stab it and you do want to go, again, classic example, so in sport mode now, I'm still on my 15 mile an hour road, down to 30, no one's following me. That's, yeah. Ballistically, ballistically quick. I've had a go at launching the car as well. I can't do it here, it's not safe to do so. I didn't have the camera equipment with me at the time, but it, it goes like, a, like an electric car goes. It is very, very quick for a very big car. In sport mode, what you've got to bear in mind is the car is so fast and so capable, but also so big and so heavy that you can find yourself in corners quicker than you feel you are going. And that's thanks to, you know, a very good ride quality, very good insulated glass. At times, the speed on your speedo does not reflect how fast you think you are going. So there is a danger of throwing yourself into a corner quicker than you expect. One of the other features on the car that I have to mention because I was hugely skeptical about it and I've done a complete U-turn on it is the electric sport sound. Porsche have programmed that into this car here on the favourite button so I can turn that on and off at the steering wheel but you can mess with it in the in the menu and obviously different modes activate and deactivate that. And I don't know how to describe the noise but see if you can hear it. Ready? It's so quick. It, it almost sounds like it drops down as well. Uh, I know it doesn't. Maybe it's engaging with the motors. This car will flick between two and four wheel drive based on efficiencies and or, or performance, admittedly, but runs the 93 kilowatt battery pack out of the faster, more powerful turbo model. So the GTS is sort of sitting in this, this happy middle ground, which is what a Porsche with a GTS badge should be. It should be the ultimate mix of driver dynamics. And yeah, I know the turbo is quicker in this car, but let's be fair, you don't need it. You don't, well, you don't need the GTS, let's, let's also be fair. But using it as a daily has been an absolute joy, an absolute joy. You know, at present, we run a Tesla Model Y and a 911, and this is the best of both. If I had one, would I miss my 911? Yes, yeah, I would. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's replaced the driving dynamics of a much lighter petrol powered equivalent. But I tell you what, if I had to run it in only one car, it's very good. Really, really impressed by them. Comfortably the best EV I've ever driven. Absolute monster. Huge thank you to Porsche Centre Nottingham and Tom Hale. Tom has, again, just gone above and beyond in, in all manners. Whee! In organising this car for me, he was really keen to, to get it filmed. I feel like the, the Taycan sits as the, the premium EV. Porsche have certainly pitched it there, haven't they? And it is a very, very good piece of kit. So I hope that I've done the, the car some justice. And the final thank you goes to you guys. Without people like you tuning into videos like this, we're not achieving the ultimate aim, which is handing over checks to local, national and international charities. In the last 24 months, we've raised over two and a half thousand pounds, and that's off the back of people like you watching videos like this. So if you like what you see, and you've enjoyed the content, please remember to like and subscribe, share the video around forums, friends, WhatsApps, really makes a huge, huge difference. Thank you from me. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Cheers.